Tomorrow is supposed to be another rain day, uh, so it was today. <laughs> so obviously the weather reports, we have no idea. Uh, it's supposed to be raining from the, the, the afternoon straight through the night, uh, but today it was supposed to rain all day too. So we may get a whole day of tennis, we may not get any, we may get a little, you know, some tennis, things may be delayed, we, we don't know. Uh, let's go through this quick. We have Hantakova and Risk. I think uh, Risk gets to the quarterfinal. And I'm not just saying that as a fellow Pittsburgher. I'm, I'm saying that because uh, she hasn't had a real rough draw so far. I mean, uh, Kvitova not being 100% and uh, Barthol still finding some form. I mean, Risk has not been really pushed to the wall. And she should have enough left. And she, remember, she did not qualify. She was a wild card. So uh, she should have a lot left in the tank. So, I mean, so said uh, Hantakova, but uh, more that Hantakova has just been so up and down in form, and Risk is, is just, you know, riding this wave and on fire. And I really just think on the big points, now I've been saying this about Makarova and have been wrong, but I do think when Hantakova uh, comes to the big points, she's going to fail. Uh, maybe it will go three sets. I, I might only go two sets, and on both at the end of the sets, Risk pulls it out. But I just feel it because I feel that's where she, the energy she has right now, the form she's in. Uh, she's been building this form the whole year. It's not like it just happened. And she kind of had a, a, the draw worked out for her. And Hantakova has been very shaky on form all year long. And uh, Plus uh, the humidity again, I think it's going to help Risk because uh, she can take some time on the ball and whack it and get to some balls where Hantakova likes to almost ping pong it, like take it quick and push it around quickly. And that's going to be harder to do in the heavy humidity. So rain delays and all that, that gives Hantakova chances to tighten up. Her muscles get tight very easily, get stiff. So everything, the way the weather's working out and everything else, and, and Risk loves these balls. Not that Hantakova doesn't like them, but Risk really gets some extra power on these balls, and she gets enough spin to control them. So I'm going for Risk in the quarterfinal. Amazing story. Uh, Azarenka should take care of Ivanovic, but I'm wondering, like, again, we have the whole thing of, like, where Makarova's getting over her... Uh, choking, you know, right now. I'm, Ivanovic, I'm wondering if she can do that, but she hasn't been really, I mean, Stevens did test her, and that was a tough one, and she got through it, but, uh, you know, I've got to, you got to go with Azarenka here. Uh, close two or three sets, and uh, probably just two sets, but close. Um, I just don't think, Azar I mean, Ivanovic's quite there yet, but there is hope she still will get there before it's all said and done, and get back to her top potential again. Uh, but maybe this is the time, but I, I, I'm i not going to predict that one. I'll go for Azarenka. Uh, Roberta Fer Federer, yeah, I mean, this should be, you know, the whole thing of when I said we might not have Federer and Nadal again, like like everybody thought that was going to happen at uh, Wimbledon, and, and they were wrong, and I, I, I said they'll probably be wrong. I was thinking that again, but I was thinking Isner and Nishikori. Well, Nishikori didn't even show up. Isner, the humidity and all the issues wore him down, unfortunately. I, I do not think Robredo and Cole Schreiber are going to stop this matchup. So, um, I just, I mean, Robredo was showing signs of some injury. He's been showing signs of fatigue this summer. Uh, Cole Schreiber hasn't been in the best form anyway. He had a kind of a, Isner was messed up in more ways than one, let's put it that way. Cole Schreiber played great, but he he had to show form to me all year to, before this. Plus these matchups, I don't think the matchups are that great. I think Robredo can be a matchup pretty well against Federer when he's like 100% fit. But other than that, and I don't think, I know Cole Schreiber beat Nadell in grass, but this isn't grass. So anyways, uh, the Bryans uh, shouldn't have a problem here, I wouldn't think. Again, I don't even know if this will get on court, and it's a late-night match. Um, I don't know if that affects doubles, uh, the conditions on doubles that much. Everything's so fast and ping-pong-like. Um, but the crowd, they should love the crowd in, in, in that arena. Uh, okay, and then uh, oh, one thing about, you know, the humidity does hurt Federer and it slows things down some. Again, Robredo, this would be a tough one if he was more fit. But anyways, uh, also remember, when it's slow night conditions, the ball may not jump as much, and that kind of hurts Nadal. So there's a little bit of hope for Robredo and Cole Schreiber, but they better be 100%. Cole Schreiber in the mind, Robredo in the body, and I don't think they are. Okay, uh, Panetta and, and Halep. I've been going against Panetta, even though I saw her in her practice in, on last Friday, and she looked great. And uh, I, I said that in my video, and how fit she looked, and she's working on aggression, some of the best strokes I had seen her, I, everything looked good, and yet I keep taking going against her. But 
again, I have to do it because Halep is in such great form, and she didn't have tough second and third round matches. So I know she's going to tire at some point, and I thought it would be already, but she keeps saying she feels good. If Panetta really pushes her against the wall, I think Halep will tire, and Panetta could do that. But I just, I mean, I just can't believe Panetta's doing all this. I mean, I know she looked great, but I, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I should listen to myself again, but I'm going to take Halep in a tough uh, two, possibly three sets, and I think this will finally wear out Halep, but she'll get through this round, but it will be really close. I just think, you know, Panetta didn't do much all year, and I know I, I, I already wrote something to someone about how, you know, on a website I actually wrote that, you know, forget about the whole year. Where is she right now? It's a new week. It's a brand new tournament, and she's looking great right now. I even saw her in practice, you know, looking great. But when push comes to shove and Halep has all this confidence right now, I'm going to take Halep in a close one may regret it. And I'm rooting for Panetta, as always. Uh, the Williams, this looks like it'll be pretty tough, though. This could be a tough match, especially with the heavy conditions. But I think, again, unless Venus gets really pooped out, I think this should be a Williams victory in the doubles. Uh, this is a really tough one. Heavy conditions favor Gasquet, I think, except he's been looking so, like, fatigued. I have to say, his last match, I thought, even though he lost his set against Tursunov, I thought he looked pretty good. But I just still feel like this summer he's looked kind of weak. Like fatigued, and I really, that's why I made my wild card pick, Raonic, Raonic in the uh, semifinal. But John Isner was my other wild card in the semifinal against Raonic. He didn't make it through because of all the humidity issues, in my opinion, on his body and on his game. And this could hurt Raonic, too. But, you know, they're not on court 17. It's Louis Armstrong, and, I, and, and it won't be so bad, hopefully. They may have some rain delay. Sometimes when rain passes through, it gets a little drier and quicker after that. So, you know, if they're in the daytime, if there is no rain and there's some sun shining, because who knows with these weather people, that will definitely then Rainich. I feel Rainich wins this in four sets. Maybe, I think Gasquet's going to take the first set. But if it goes to the night match or it get you know, a delay to the next day and it's a little drier conditions will also help Rainich. But the one thing that could help Gasquet is if they go to night and it's really a heavy humidity, but then will Gasquet be able to last physically? So again, I'm going to go with Rainich either way. But if it's at night and Gasquet can last physically, he could definitely win this. Um, Vinci, I think it's this time's up for Georgie. I'm so it's so awesome what she's done. But I think um, you know, Vinci has too much slice and dice, and it's not dink and dunk. Dink and dunk doesn't work here. That's a little different. That's like playing around with little poppers and droppers and you know little lobs and, and messing around a lot, not you know being aggressive. I, Vinci has an aggressive game with us, but she has a slice and dice game. She likes to mix in the slice and variety and get to the net. As long as she keeps it aggressive and doesn't get too defensive and mixes it up with Gorgie, and as long as Gorgie's not in incredible form again like the other night, I just think she has to come down a bit. And if she comes down, Vinci should use the variety and it might frustrate Gorgie. And I think she'll take it with her experience, Vinci. Um, Ferrer should have this. Both these guys aren't in form, but certainly Ferrer's had a much better year than Tipsarovic. So um, Tipsarovic did what he had to do to get here, but Jack Sock and David Ferrer, that's two different propositions. And I think that Ferrer, uh, you know, he's finding a little bit of form right now, and I think he, he does it in three, maybe the first set or two are close, but in three sets. Uh, and then we have a bunch of doubles, Levakova and Mirny in the mix, Kara Black and Arakovic, that's a good one. All these Peshki and Matkowski, that's a good one. Some really good doubles there. Uh, and I think that's a wrap. We don't have any singles on court 17. Looks like the pit is going to be left just to doubles, which will help the singles players. Unless, of course, we get rain delays. You never know what happens then. And then a lot of juniors. We'll see if we have rain or not.